So BRICS 2.0 release candidate or RC2 was released recently and with it there's a couple of changes, updates and things that I think are noteworthy. Two in particular which I'll cover in this video but we'll take a quick look at some of the other things as well. Now this is a release candidate 2 which means it's almost ready for release so there's not going to be massive changes or feature updates here. They're more sort of quality of life tweak enhancements, fixes and things like that based upon community feedback. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the fact that components are now production ready. So if you tested components out previously, you'll know that these were experimental, therefore not really something you should be using on a live site. Now these are production ready, so you can start using them on your live sites. So if you've been holding back, which you should have done, you can now start to use these with a bit more confidence, knowing that they are where they should be right now, and they're more stable, and therefore you should start using them. Hopefully we'll see new features and updates and expansions of the components option now that we have BRICS 2.0 coming out soon once that's released I expect to see a lot of these features being enhanced and fixed if there are any issues ongoing Probably less interesting but still good to know is that we have instant class edit. That just basically means if you've got a website with thousands and thousands of classes and variables and things like that, the editor won't slow down or shouldn't slow down. I haven't tested it myself, so if you have, let me know in the comments section down below what your experience has been on sites with a lot more classes. This brings me on to what I would consider to be a really useful feature update, and that is how the command palette has expanded to make our lives a little easier. Now, we've got a dedicated video in this which you can check out here, but I'm going to give you the quick TLDR here just to kind of give you a very, very brief description of how this all works. For those unfamiliar, the command palette, as its name suggests, is a palette that allows us to do various different things. So if we hold the command and press K, you'll see this brings the command palette up. Inside here, we currently have three different things we can do. We can access features inside the builder, so things like our global classes, variables, uh, open the settings and those kinds of things. You can also jump out of here into the dashboard for various different things. You've also got the ability to work with post types. If we click on that, you can see there's different posts inside here, and we can separate these out based upon on templates, posts, pages, and you'll see we've got keyboard shortcuts. You also have elements now, so your normal elements like your containers, your blocks, your divs, your text headings, and all those kinds of things are available. Now, I covered the overview of this in a previous video. We took a look at this with the original RC release of this. However, there's a really useful new feature added in here. Actually, it's probably broken down into two. We can now use kind of Emmet shortcode to be able to insert structures directly inside you. Let me just very briefly show you what I'm talking about. Let's say you want to insert a section. We can now use the at symbol and type in section, hit insert, and we've now inserted a section with its native container inside. Cool, but you can go further than that. Let's say you wanted to add two of these in. We can just put in times two, hit insert, we now have two sections with containers inside each one. Now that's quite nifty, but there's more you can do here. We can use basically what's called Emmet syntax. This is a specific kind of syntax that allows us to write kind of short code, like markup, for example, if you're working with text, and we can use that to build out structures super quickly. So let's just add in our section one more time. But let's say we want to add in two sections. So we'll do multiply it by two. Now, let's say inside that section, we also want to include a header, some rich text, and a button in each one of those two sections. Well, let's do that. So we'll do add heading plus some rich text, and we also want to add in our button. So now we have two sections with containers inside that each one has a heading, rich text, and button. You can see how this is so much quicker, but it also goes further. Let's open that back up again. And you also notice one other feature. Because we've been using this, it stays exactly where we were previously. So inside the element section, we haven't got to go back through to all of that. It's all kind of saved inside you. Pretty nifty. So let's just say that we want to add something like this in again. We'll just keep it simple and we'll just say section times two. Okay. And we'll say we want to save this because we want to use this over and over again. Hit save, give it a name. We'll call it Wibble because why not? Hit save. And now we have Wibble. So let's just get rid of these. Let's open up our command palette. Let's select our structure and choose Wibble. Insert. There we go. There's our two sections. Pretty nifty. So this really does open up what you can do with a command palette using that Emmet kind of syntax and saving things to insert them as you need to. You could build up a simple library here. So sticking with our command palette, let's open that back up. And I want to jump over to the settings. So we're going to go to the builder. So we'll use the hashtag. And from there, we also want to open up the settings. 
Okay, so we're now into the settings section, just simply using keyboard shortcuts and the command palette. So this now leads us on to another little tweak quality of life enhancement. And that is if we jump into the performance tab and scroll down, we now have preload custom fonts. This should help where you have that kind of flash of unstyled content when it's kind of loading fonts in and it's kind of using a system font as opposed to the custom font you've supplied. This just preloads them, which I would always recommend you do and always make sure you have your custom fonts set up on your system. Don't be using those Google fonts and remotely connecting to them. It's a big no-no when you want to come to things like GDPR and those kind of compliance things with the EU and so on. So make sure you upload your own fonts and then use this preload custom fonts option, save it, forget it, job done, hit save settings and you are all done. So there are tweaks inside the editor now that kind of make the interface a little bit nicer to work with, a little bit less confusing maybe. For example, if we choose this heading as an example, come over to the style section, all our normal panels are here. But once we open one of these up, like typography, for example, you'll see that everything else disappears. We literally only have the option for our typography until we close it down, and then we have everything back. Click on background, we only see background. Great if you've got a smaller screen, great if you want to remove that clutter. You can switch back if you want to in the settings to put it back to the original way where everything is there. I kind of prefer this way of working. It's a nice, clean interface that just removes a lot of distractions you don't actually need. So just close it down and everything is back there for you. And finally, if like me, you like to use the history and the revisions to be able to go back to certain points, if you come across a problem, that's now moved. Take a look at the top right where it's kind of always been, it's gone. It's not on the top left hand side. So where is it? Simple, come into the manage option and everything's been moved inside here. So there's your history and revisions and everything is there for both your history and revisions. I will now promptly forget where that is, come back in a couple of months time, think, oh, I need to go into the history of revision and think, where the hell has that moved to? So if you are with me on that one, well, now you know where it is, and hopefully you'll be able to reference this video to find it when you've lost it. So those are the key changes in Bricks version 2.0 RC2. I'll link to the change log so you can take a look at this for yourself and read a little bit more about it. But hopefully this has been useful to you. If you want to learn more about working with Bricks, check out this playlist, link in the description down below as well. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.